So next, who I would like to welcome is Teresa Peterson. Teresa lives in Kodiak and she commercial fishes with her family. During the summer months, her son runs their family's fishing vessel, salmon seining, and the rest of the family works the set net operation in the south end of Kodiak Island. Throughout the rest of the year, Teresa works as the Kodiak Outreach Coordinator for the Alaska Marine Conservation Council, awesome, and is an advocate protecting the long-term health of the oceans and maintaining thriving coastal communities. She serves as a variety of fishing boards, including the advisory panel on the North Pacific Fishery Management Council. Everybody, please welcome Teresa. Well, good evening and thank you. Well, I came to Alaska for the salmon. In 1982, I was living in my hometown, San Diego, and going to college, and I was looking for somebody to travel to South America with me. And I couldn't find any takers, so when some friends of mine said they were going to Alaska to work in the cannery to process salmon for the summer, I said, oh, I'll come along. Man, I hate the cold. I'm sure I will never go north again. So school got out, and the three of us hitchhiked up to Seattle and jumped on a ferry for Haines and started making our way north. I was with my best girlfriend, Julie, and her boyfriend. And so once on the ferry, we started looking for rides to get to Anchorage next. And well, we only found a spot for one of us. So being resourceful 21-year-old girls, we sent the guy and figured we'd have better odds of getting a ride. Well, it didn't work out so well. There we were hours later, standing in the rain and a desolate road outside of Haines and looking around going, huh, well, it's also this old car with a young couple whips over and the guy says, well, get in. We'll give you a ride as far as token. Well, we go faster around the corners with more weight in the back of the car. <laughs> so we got in. We had no idea where Toke was, but we were on our way. Well, after a few more rides and spending the night next to the dump in Anchorage, we were on that home stretch. You know, we're, we're heading to home. We're all huddled in the back of a pickup truck. And we pulled over on that bluff that overlooks Ketchmack Bay. I remember looking across the bay, looking across at the glaciers, and saying to myself, I found it. And I don't know what I had thought I'd found at that spot, but I just knew I had really landed someplace special. So then, then a couple days, we found work at this cannery, this old cannery at the foot of Homer Spit. And now I'd seen my first salmon, and I'm working the slime line in this cold, noisy building with no glacier view. So <laughs> after four days, I said to myself, I said, there's no way I'm spending my summer in Alaska working in some metal building. I, I quit. And I told my friends, I go, I'm getting on one of those fishing boats. So I, I ended up getting on the Big Valley. It was a shrimp boat. And those first couple days, I made more money than I'd saved in two summers of waitressing. So now not only had I found this beautiful, rugged wilderness with really neat people, I'm like, wow, there's, there's money to be made here. So summer ended. and. The shrimp season ended, and my friends headed back to college. And I said, well, now I'm, gonna, I'm going to Kodiak. I'm going to go find a king crab job. So I got off the ferry in Kodiak, and I, I walked the docks for two full days and never got up the nerve to ask one boat for a job. I'm like, oh, Kodiak's scary, and it's tough, and these boats are big. And they had names like Invincible and <laughs> Determined and Terminator. And I'm like, oh my god, they're going to eat me for lunch. And so. I decided I needed a little bit more experience before I went king crab, king crab fishing. So I went back and did go to a quarter of school. And then I came back in the spring because my friends um, had said, you got to come back in the spring to find a salmon job. So I, I came back and I didn't find a salmon job, but I found a job halibut long lining. And, but I, I was hooked. I loved it. It was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life, but it was so challenging. And, the camaraderie of the crew was great, and you'd be fishing offshore and pulling into these different ports, all proud of your catch. And I thought it was really something special. So I, I stayed with it, and I ended up out west, out in the Aleutian Islands, longlining for black cod. And the, the fishing was good. And one day, it was so good, this pod of killer whales comes by, and they start snacking on our, on our black cod off the line for lunch. They're like, yeah, this is great. Look at these black cod coming up. They were like 
sucking them off like grapes, I think, because all we'd get was an occasional pair of lips. So <laughs> we surrendered to their expertise, and we're like, well, let's go beachcombing instead. So we head in, and then we're on, we were on Umnak Island, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to go find a glass ball. I had been determined to find a glass ball, and I head down the beach and didn't find a thing, come back empty-handed, and I see another boat's come in the bay, and their crew's over you know, with our crew having a fire on the beach, and cooking steaks on these rocks. And I look down and one of the guys has a glass ball sit next to him. I'm like, oh, you found one, all excited. And he looks up and is like, oh, yeah, you want it? And I just met my future husband, Charlie. And well, I, still, I still have that glass ball. I have Charlie, too. So the next year, we're out there together. We're out on the same boat, long-lining Black Hawk, and uh, you got a lot of time on the back tech to talk, so we're back there going, yeah, man, we're, gonna, we're buying our own boat. Yeah, we're going to work for ourselves. Yeah, we could do that. So we got paid well. We worked hard, paid, paid fair, and we combined our crew shares. And in 1988, we bought a little salmon boat and a salmon permit and started getting our operation ready to go. And that, that's the thing with salmon fishing in Alaska. The permits are owner-operated. So if you want to go commercial salmon fishing, you put on your boots and you go. And I just I love that policy. So the first year was just a great experience. The boat was tiny, 36 foot. It was like a little floating Tupperware container. And we had my little brother on board and this cat I'd been dragging around for years and this <laughs> giant Chesapeake Bay Retriever that this girl had asked us to watch when she went to Hawaii. She never came back. We kept the dog. <laughs> and this guy from Sweden that hardly spoke any English, but it was really neat. The more experienced fishermen just helped us out left and right. They saw a young couple trying to make a go of it, and they always gave us a hand and gave us advice. That it was one day we were out off Alatak Beach, and it was rough, and our, flip, our skiff flipped in the surf, and we were like, oh, and this other boat, Jose on the Miss Palomar, he sees we're in trouble. He practically blows his main engine just steaming to come and help us and helps pull it, you know, pull us off the beach and all was good. But that's just another thing with salmon fishing I find in Alaska. People help each other out all the time. We share skiffs and nets and parts and give each other a hand. It's just really a special, special community. And that next summer, well, our, our first child was born and, well, there was no salmon fish in that summer. There was a oil tanker hit a reef a few hundred miles away, but that's, that's another story. So over the years, we, are, we got a little bit bigger boat, and then about 10 years ago, we bought a set net site on the south end of the island, and Charlie and I now work that site with our girls, one of which is my daughter sitting right there. And then our son, our son now runs the same boat. And, and sometimes I, I look over the bay and I just marvel at how lucky I am to have found Alaska. I love it here, and I love the salmon for bringing me here. Thank you. Thank you.